We seek the protection of God from Shaitan who has been expelled from God's kingdom of special grace and mercy because of his satanic habits. If we avoid these satanic habits, we will get the strength to be able to oppose shaitan. The satanic habit of arrogance, if we know what is right and the truth by the guidance of the God-given intellect and the divine revelation and the human conscience, we submit. And if we avoid the satanic habit of defiance, whatever we know to be evil and wrong and false and sinful, by the guidance of the God-given intellect, divine revelation, human conscience, we don't commit. And if we submit ourselves and have reliance on God, definitely we'll get the strength to overcome any satanic misguidance. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. We humbly seek blessings and guidance from God because He is Allah, the absolute perfect being. Therefore, nobody can achieve perfection until and unless Allah wills it so. And we seek His guidance because He is Rahman, His Rahmah, His love, His mercy is universal, reaches out to each and every entity brings it to life, sustains it, and enables it to reach its goal of creation. And we ask for his blessings and guidance because he is Rahim. His extra love, continuous grace and mercy, support and success in the dunya, reward in the akhirah, everlasting, eternal, diverse, profound, unimaginable, is reserved specifically for those amongst us who believe in him and who follow his guidance. Alhamdulillah, all praise belongs to him and him alone. I quote the praise for today from one of the du'as of Imam Zainul Abidin salam in Sahifa Sajjadiyya. Allahumma laka alhamdu hamdan yadumu bidawamik. ولك الحمد حمدا خالدا بنعمتك ولك الحمد حمدا يوازي صنعك ولك الحمد حمدا يزيد على رضاك All praise belongs to God and God alone because he is permanent and permanent in his goodness and all praise belongs to God because he is everlasting in his provision of blessings and bounties. And all praise belongs to God, parallel to and equivalent to all the acts of benefaction that he does specifically and individually to us. In fact, I want to continue to praise you, O Lord, so that I may gain more pleasure, your pleasure. وَلَكَ الْحَمْدُ حَمْدًا مَعَ كُلِّ حَامِدٍ And I don't want to only praise you for those specific blessings you give me as a person, but all the blessings you give to other individuals and they praise you, I want to praise you with them also. حَمْدًا لَا يَنْبَغِي إِلَّا لَكْ A praise which is suitable and worthy only for you. وَلَا يُتَقَرَّبْ بِهِ إِلَّا إِلَيْكَ and through this praise, we can win approval and acceptance and acknowledgement and proximity, but to you and you alone. Hamdan yustadamu bihi al-awwal wa yustadda'a bihi dawamu al-akhir. A praise which pleases you so much that you will to give us more and more from the beginning. And we want to praise you continuously so that even in the end, you continue to provide us. And Imam alayhi salam continues with this praise, but I will skip that. Then Imam says that, 
we send our special greetings and salutations and blessings and benefactions on the Holy Prophet and on his holy progeny. Rabbi salli ala Muhammadin wa ali Muhammad al muntajab al mustafa al mukarram al mukarrab afdali salawatika wa barik alayhi atamma barakatika wa tarahm alayhi amta'a rahmatik. Oh Allah, send your mercy and grace on the Holy Prophet because he was the distinguished and prominent amongst all the Prophets. Al Mustafa, he is the chosen and the purified one. Al Mukarram, he is honored and raised amongst all. Al Mukarrab, he is the closest to you compared to everyone. And therefore, send him on him the most excellent of your benefactions and bless him with the most complete of your blessings and have mercy on him the most enjoyable of your mercies rabbi salli ala muhammadin wa alihi salatan zakiyatan la takunu salatan azka minha and give him the purest of all the blessings وصلي عليه صلاة نامية لا تكون صلاة أنما منها. Give him the most progressive of all the blessings. وصلي عليه صلاة راضية لا تكون صلاة فوقها. And let these blessings and greetings and salutations be the most pleasing to you. None more pleasing than this. صلاة ترضيه وتزيد على رضاه صلاة ترضيك وتزيد على رضاك له Give him those salutations, O Allah, whereby he is going to be most pleased. Give him those salutations and greetings and blessings which are the most pleasing to you. صلاة لا ترضى له إلا بها وَلَا تَرَى غَيْرَهُ لَهَا أَهْلًا A salat and a salutation which you do not please to give anyone else other than him and which because nobody else other than him deserves to get all this grace and mercy. Finally, Imam alayhi salam then sends his special salutations on the Ahl Bayt of the Prophet Rabbi salli ala ata'ibi ahli baytihi Alladheena ikhtartahum li amrika wa ja'altahum khazanata ilmika wa hafazata deenika wa khulafaaka fi ardika wa hujajaka ala ibadika wa tahartahum min al-rijsi wa al-danasi tatuhiram bi iradatik wa ja'altahum al-wasilata ilayk wa al-maslaka Ila jannatik and your special salutations on the best of the his ahlul bayt because they are the ones whom you personally and specifically and exclusively chose to receive your command and to deliver your command and you made them and appointed them as the treasures of your divine knowledge on the earth and the guardians and protectors of your faith and your vicegerents and representatives on the earth and your proof against all your servants on the earth and in order to qualify them you purified them from all sort of pollution be it physical be it mental be it spiritual and hence you made them the wasila and the means and the medium to receive the grace from you for the creation and to enable the creation to find the way back to you. In fact, they are the road to your jannah, to your pleasure, to your paradise, to your reward. Usikum ibad Allah wa nafsi bi Allah. Community of believers, I wish to remind you, as I do myself, of the necessity of taqwa. This week, 
The taqwa is that we should recognize the status of the Ahlul Bayt alayhimussalam because in this week of the Hijjah, three important historical events have taken place, all of which have been recorded in the Quran. On the 24th of Zil Hijjah was the event of Mubahala, mentioned in Surah Ali Imran, ayah number 61. <coughs> also is the ring-giving episode in the mosque of the Holy Prophet, for which ayah number 55 of Surah Ma'ida was revealed. And also the 25th of Zil Hijjah is the event of the revelation of Surah Dahar, which is a proclamation of the high status of the Ahlul Bayt and therefore it behooves us to remind ourselves of the significance of these three events and how they portray the status of the Ahlul Bayt The event of Surah Dahar on the 25th of Zil Hijjah is well known but as a reminder Hassanain salam became sick, they were very young they were visited by the Prophet ﷺ in the company of his other companions. And it was suggested that why don't you make a nazar that if they get well in thanks and gratitude to God, you shall do some good deeds. And therefore they fasted for three days in nazar. However, to break their fast, they had nothing extra at home because everything they have, they always give away. So Imam Ali salam borrows a few kilos of wheat flour, barley flour to come from a Jewish neighbor to come and enable the holy lady to make some meals for them. She cooks five pieces of bread, but then on the first night at the time of breaking fast and on the second night and on the third night a miskin and a yatim and a asir come consecutively and they say salam ala ahli bayti muhammad ana miskin min masakin al muslimin ana yatim min yatam al muslimin ana asir min usar al mushrikin that i am a needy person i am an orphan I am a prisoner of war. And the elders in the family, they share and they give away their portion of their breakfast. And in following their example, the young ones also give away whatever they had. This supreme act of sacrifice is so beloved to God that when they go to sleep, despite the intense hunger that they suffer, they just break their fast on water, despite the intense hunger, they continue with the second day and the third day till it reaches a point where when the Holy Prophet then visits and sees the, con the condition of, the frail condition of the young boys, the Holy Prophet comes to know about this and this surah is revealed that يُوفُونَ بِالنَّذْرِ They make a nazar and they make wafa, they fulfill their nazar. وَيَخَافُونَ يَوْمًا كَانَ شَرُّهُ مُسْتَطِيرًا And they fear the accounting of a day when every way there will be punishment for those who are not prepared. وَيُطْعِمُونَ الطَّعَامَ عَلَى حُبِّهِ مِسْكِينًا وَيَتِيمًا وَأَسِيرًا And they give away regularly, three days consecutively, whatever little food they had, they gave it away to the miskin and the yatim and the asir ala hubbihi, despite the fact they loved it and needed it, despite the fact that they, that they were in intense, desperate need for it, ala hubbihi, out of love for the creation of God, ala hubbihi, in love of this act of sacrifice, ala hubbihi, in love for God. And the pleasure of God, the pleasure of God is more powerful than the little pain that I experience in my belly, in my empty belly. Allah loves this act of sacrifice and therefore praises it. And Allah then protects them from the afflictions, promises them the protection from the day of judgment. 
إنما نطعمكم لوجه الله لا نريد منكم جزاء ولا شكورا. We give this away not that we expect any appreciation from you though it is your duty to appreciate. Not that we want you to repay and recompense to us later on whenever God enables you though it is your duty to recognize and to acknowledge and to pay back. But we don't do out of that. Our motive is to please God and God alone. This incident has been reported in, by many scholars, Usdul Ghaba of Ibn Athir and Ma'alum al-Tanzil of Baghawi and Matalib al-Sa'ul of Shafi'i and Tadhkira of Awliya of Ibn Jawzi and Manaqib of Khawarizmi and Sharh Ibn Nahj al-Balagha of Ibn Abi al-Hadid and many others. So the event is well recorded in the books of history. Keep this in mind, and I'll come back to the lessons we should learn from this. The second incident is that of the ring-giving ceremony. The riwaya, again, which is reported even in the tafsir of the Sunni scholars, be it Manaqib of Khawarizmi or Tariq Damishq of Ibn Asakir or Durr Manthur of Suyuti, he says they report this from Ibn Abbas that this ayah was revealed to the Prophet Innama waliyukum Allah wa rasooluhu walladheena amanu your wali is only and only God only and only the Prophet and only and only the believers Believers, your wali are these three, only, exclusively, in nama. But which of the believers are our wali? Then the ayah describes a specific act that was performed. Alladheena yuqimuna salata. Those who establish prayer, that means not only they pray, but they establish and keep upright and maintain prayers. They pray on time, punctually. They pray frequently and regularly. They pray not only the wajib, but also the mustahab. They pray not only individually, but collectively in jama'ah. They don't pray alone. They invite others to pray, be it their home, be it their workplace. Be it no, they're visiting some other. They've just gone for a picnic or a halal visit. Anywhere and everywhere they go, Salah is their priority. They establish a society of those who pray to God. يُقِيمُونَ الصَّلَاةَ وَيُؤْتُونَ الزَّكَاةَ And they give zakah. Whatever is the necessary financial obligation that Allah has made on them, they give it away. يُؤْتُونَ الزَّكَاةَ لَكِينِ وَهُمْ رَاكِعُونَ But they give it away in a state when they are in ruku'. Ruku' here doesn't mean uh, a state of humility. Yes, it could mean that, but that's a metaphorical interpretation. You only go for metaphors when the literal translation and apparent meaning is not correct. Well, the apparent meaning can be correct that somebody in the state of ruku' can give away something in zakat. When this ayah was revealed, according to these Sunni sources, the Holy Prophet was intrigued what has happened that somebody has given zakat in ruku'? So he came out to the mosque. فَخَرَجَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ وَدَخَلَ الْمَسْجِدِ وَالنَّاسُ يصلون. And people were praying. So apparently they must be praying some mustahab prayer. مَا بَيْنَ رَاكِعٍ وَسَاجِدٍ And somewhere in the state of sajda, somewhere in the state of ruku'. وَإِذَا سَائِلْ And the Prophet meets a beggar. So the Prophet asks, Ya Sa'il, a'ataka ahadun shay'a. You got something as zakat from someone? So the beggar says, La illa hadha raki'. There was no official payment as such, but this person here, this man in the state of Ruku, a'atani khataman. He gave me a ring. Wa ashara ila aliyin. فَكَبَّرَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ He pointed to the man, the beggar, Ali alayhi salam. 
So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi glorified the Lord. Allahu Akbar. Alhamdulillah alladhi anzal al-ayat al-bayyinat fi abi al-hasan wal-husayn alayhimu salam. This is a clear sign that Allah has sent down about the status of Ali alayhi salam. This is the second event. Keep it on hold, the significance of this event. That your wali is only God. Only the Prophet. Only those believers who give zakat in the state of ruku'ah. Not every believer. Question. What is it about giving zakat in the state of ruku'ah that qualifies a, a mu'min to become wali? In the same way that God is wali in representation of God to become the wali as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa is wali in continuation and representation of the authorization of the Prophet. We'll discuss that, but just keep it on hold. The third event that has occurred this week is the event of Mubahala. Sa'ad bin Abi Waqqas, a companion of the Prophet, the father of Umar ibn Sa'ad, he had a brother, Umar ibn Sa'ad, Amir bin Sa'ad. Amir reports this, that my father was asked by Muawiyah. I've given instructions everywhere that Ali should be abused officially on the mimma in the khutbah of Salatul Jumu'ah. How come you are not doing that? How come you're opposing? And Sa'ad replies, there are three things that Ali was given. I wish I had nothing in the dunya but those three things. Sa'ad was rich. He had power at some stage. He was the governor. Then he was removed from that position by the third Khalifa. Of the three things he recounts, one of them is this event. That when the debate took place with the Ahl Kitab from Najran, and when they asked the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that why don't you believe in Jesus' special status of divinity? Who is the father of Jesus, they said. And the Prophet ﷺ was instructed to respond to them, إِنَّ مَثَلَ عِيسَ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ كَمَثَلِ آدَمَ خَلَقَهُ مِنْ تُرَابٍ ثُمَّ قَالَ لَهُ كُنْ فَيَكُونَ Ayah number 59, Surah Ali Imran. If you're asking me that the special status of Jesus of being divine is because he has no father, then I ask you that in God's eyes, in God's knowledge, and God's knowledge is, has got no falsehood, has got no error, has got no negligence, has got no weakness, has got no deficiency, it's eternal, it's everlasting, it's solid, it's powerful. In God's eyes, the status of Isa alayhi salam is like the status of Adam. خَلَقَهُ مِنْ تُرَابٍ Adam السلام, was created not from a previous uh, subhuman generation. No. He was created straight from the earth. Of course, what are the stages of the development of man from the earth? In other verses of the Quran, Allah has discussed that and mentioned that separately in Surah Furqan, in Surah Hijr, in Surah Safat. That there are stages of earth changing till it becomes human. So he, from the earth and from the material substance, the material body of Adam was ready. But the soul wasn't there as yet. Now this material, physically shaped body, human body had to become alive. And the soul had to enter. And that soul, ثُمَّ قَالَ لَهُ كُنْ فَيَكُونَ When the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was asked, يَسْأَلُونَكَ عَنِ الرُّوحِ قُلِ الرُّوحِ مِنْ أَمْرِ رَبِّي Tell them, you may not know and not be able to understand everything about the soul, but know this much that the soul is from the Amr of my Lord. And in Surah Yasin, Allah says, The Amr of the Lord is innama amruhu idha arada shay'an an yaqula lahu kun fayakun. 
Allah will something be and it is it's that instantaneous in the physical material world in which is constrained by the limits of time and space you need time for creation six stages خَلَقَ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضَ فِي سِتَّةِ أَيَّامَ But in the non-material, non-physical, spiritual world? No, that's a timeless world. Be, and it is. The soul was created, and the soul was breathed unto the body, and he became a living Adam. So if you claim divinity because of no father, then forget about Adam. Hawa had no mother and no father. But she's not a goddess. Adam, but we will not mention about Hawa because she was not a prophetess. We'll mention Adam, he was the prophet. And Isa alayhi salam in God's eyes also is a prophet. So they had no answer. So the next ayah then says that if they don't have a logical response to this argument, and this argument has been repeated again and again and again in different surahs of the Quran in different ways, why God cannot ever have a co-substantial substance of God being shared with anybody else. Subhana, glory be to him, exalted is he, Unlimited is he in his creation. An yakuna lahu walad. Because lahu mulku samawati wal ard. Everything other than him is belonging to him, created by him, totally subordinate and controlled and powered by him. Okay, therefore, cannot be a co substantial, co essential sharing the essence of divinity with God. So if they refuse to accept the logical argument and they persist. In this stubborn refusal, they now challenge them to a miracle. فَمَنْ حَاجَّكَ فِيهِ مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا جَاءَكَ مِنَ الْعِلْمِ If all this ilm and knowledge and proof and arguments which are incontrovertible and undefeatable come to you and yet they refuse to accept, فَقُلْ This is an order. تَعَالَوْ Come. نَدْعُوْ Let's have a miraculous encounter. We pray to God now. Where is the truth? And in this prayer, we call everyone. We call our sons. One, two, three, as many. You call your sons. We call our women. You call your women. Our mothers, our sisters, our daughters, our aunts, our grandmothers. All ladies, call them. And you also call all your ladies. وَأَنفُسَنَا وَأَنفُسَكُمْ And we call ourselves and you also call yourselves. ثُمَّ Once we have called all these, ثُمَّ نَبْتَهِلْ Then we make ibtihal. Ibtihal is to pray to God but in a specific way. A sincere, earnest, desperate, exclusive prayer to God which cannot be left unanswered. These are the necessary conditions for answering a prayer. Ud'uni astajib lakum if a man yujibul mudhtarra idha da'ahu wa yakshifu su. These three conditions, if they apply, Allah will answer that prayer. ثُمَّ نَبْتَهِلْ فَنَجْعَلْ لَعْنَةَ اللَّهِ عَلَى الْكَاذِبِينَ And then we pray that God's curse comes on the liars. Interesting, the Holy Prophet doesn't say the curse should come on you, the liars. No, he says, whoever is a liar, I could be a liar, so I should be punished. Or maybe you are the liars, so you will be punished. But we'll pray sincerely and earnestly. The Imams of the Ahlul Bayt, Imam Ali, Imam Hassan, Imam Rida alayhi salam, and the other Imams have used this ayah to say that 
the prophet could have called all sons, but he called only two grandsons. He could have called all women, but he called only the holy lady. He could have called anyone who is near and dear to him, but he called only one man, Ali ibn Abi Talib. Meaning that, Sa'ad bin Abi Waqqas says, by, I swear to God, when this ayah was revealed, everyone was yearning that we should be called. Kwanini, because they understood, Anfusana here means, Somebody who is nearer to the Prophet than the son and the grandson. Somebody who is nearer to the Prophet than the most beloved of his daughter. The closest person to the Prophet. Prophet closeness is not by family. Sa'ad wanted to be that close. Closeness to the Prophet means privilege, means position, means honor means spirituality, means popularity. Of course, the positive type of popularity. That's why they were seeking power in the future because of this. And Fusana means the next best to the Prophet. Combine all these three verses together. Surah Dahar, Surah Ma'idah, the ring-giving episode, and the event of Mubahala. A leader can only be qualified if according to Surah Dahar, he loves the poor. He loves the food but is ready to give away the food. He loves the act of giving. He loves God more than anything and everything else. That is Surah Dahar. But in Surah Dahar, all the others could also become leaders. No. Amongst them, Surah Ma'idah, Ayah 55 says, No, your wali, the leader, has to be someone who is yuqimun as salah, who is very close to God through salah. Whole night he spends in prayer. No. During the daytime, he is also engaged in other activities, but those other activities don't prevent him from salah. In Salah, he is close to God. After Qiyam, he's gone to Rukur. But even when he's close to God, he's not switched off and distant and uncaring and unattentive and unconcerned about the problems of the creation. There are those who are so close to God, they forget everything else. There are those who are so much into the dunya, they forget God. There are those who balance, sometimes remember God, sometimes the creation. But who is there who remembers creation when he is with God? And who is the one who remembers God when he is with the creation? That is the leader we should be looking for. No. No, not only to be giving and to love the act of giving and to love God more than anything else. And no, to be loving God and loving the creation at the same time. No, the best example and the manifestation of this leadership quality was the Prophet. And Mubahala says that the next best was Ali ibn Abi Talib. No wonder Sa'ad bin Waqqas, Abi Waqqas was aspiring for this ayah to apply to him. Let's pray to Allah for tawfiq to be able to recognize the status of the Ahlul Bayt, to be proud of them and to follow their examples. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Wal Asr. Allah swears by time in this week the historical events are important. In al insan al fi khusr. And you are in a state of loss if you don't consider these wonderful examples that Allah has set for us. Illa Ladina Amen. Except for those who seek the truth, find it and accept it. With the, and then they live according to these models examples with the, and then they spread the truth with the, and collectively fight against evil